All right, um, here is an explanation about how multiple regression works. And the general idea is, um, um, well, forget the general idea for a second. Let's suppose that we have um, a multiple regression where we are looking at uh, depression, uh, how depressed someone is, or a sample of people are on a scale from say one to six or whatever. That's the dependent variable, that's the y variable. And then we've got two predictor variables or two independent variables. These would be two different x variables in a regression. One is alcohol, how much alcohol a person drinks. And the other one is relationship woes. This would be um, how happy or depressed um, somebody is in their <clears throat> personal relationships. So what we're doing in a multiple regression is we're taking the dependent variable and we're trying to see how much of the variance, the overall variance in the dependent variable is going to be explained by the independent variables. So what we mean by um, overall variance is that people's scores on this depression scale are going to differ from each other and um, they're going to differ from the average and all of these differences between the individual scores in some sample and the average score for the sample, um, these are uh, considered variability or variation. So we're trying to figure out what explains the variation. And another way to think about that is what explains why one person might score a three on the depression scale and another person might score a seven. So that difference between the three and the seven is variation. And we're looking for things that predict that variation or explain the variation. So that's what the independent variables are supposed to do. They're supposed to account for some of the variability in the scores on depression. And the way that we find out how much of the variation is explained in depression by some independent variables is we look at how strongly the variables are related to each other. So uh, to do that, we look at correlations and we find that the relationship between depression and alcohol for the, the correlation between those two variables is 0 0.30 and the relationship between depression and one's relationship woes, that means the higher somebody scores on their relationship problems, the relationship sadness or woes, the more depressed they are that correlation is 0 0.40. But what makes multiple regression different from just looking at bivariate correlations, bivariate meaning the relationships between two variables, is that we are looking at the relationship between two variables, an independent variable and the dependent variable, when you control for other independent variables. That means when you carve out the piece of... Um, of explained variance that is attributable to or is accounted for by each independent variable. So I don't just want to know what's the relationship between alcohol and a person's level of depression. I want to know what's the relationship between alcohol and the person's level of depression. Once you factor out, or in statistics terms, once you control for the relationship between um, depression and relationship woes. And one of the things that's very important about this is that this relationship, the relationship between the two independent variables, is going to determine how much unique variance is explained by each of the independent variables. So the stronger the correlation is between the two independent variables of alcohol and relationship woes, the less each one of those is likely to explain on their own in the dependent variable, which is level of depression. So let's see if we can show you what this looks like in a graph. <clears throat> so the yellow is the total amount of variance in depression. And let's write that out in depression. And the red is how much of the variance in depression is explained by 
um, relationship status or relationship woes, I should say. So remember the correlation between these two things was 0 0.40. And that means that right here, where the two variables overlap, the R squared, which we said was the coefficient of determination, is 0.16. So relationship woes explains 16% um, of the variance in depression. So everything is good, right? Now, um, let's add in uh, alcohol, how much one drinks. And remember, the relationship between, um, let's see, the relationship between relationship woes and alcohol was really strong. People are going through problems in their relationships and they start drinking, right? So there's a pretty strong correlation between relationship woes and alcohol. This overlap here is where alcohol and relationship woes overlap is 49 percent. Remember, because the correlation is 0 0.70, so the R squared is 49 percent. Now, here's what we really care about with, um, with regression, and here's what's cool about it, or with multiple regression, I should say. This thing right here, this overlap, whoops, I'm going to do that. This overlap between the two predictor variables, so let me see if I can color this in. This is where the two predictor variables overlap with depression, with the dependent variable. And that is shared predictive power of the two independent variables, right? That means that this little bit right here, drink, that little area, let me make that a little bit clearer, right in, no, that's not good either. Right in there, where there is overlap between the blue circle and the yellow circle, that is overlap between alcohol and depression without any overlap with re relationship status that is the independent uh, or unique explanatory power of alcohol on depression and you can see it's very small similarly up here that is how much of the unique variance in depression is being explained by relationship woes. That's very small too. So neither one of these two unique variance slices is very big and neither one's probably gonna be statistically significant. We're talking about maybe one or 2% of the variance in relationship status being explained by each one of these variables separately. So, Multiple regression says how much of the variance in the dependent variable is explained by the two independent variables combined? <sighs> Excuse me. And the two independent variables combined explain a pretty healthy chunk of the variance in depression. It's going to be this whole amount right there. Probably somewhere, you know, 18, 19%, something like that. But the unique variance that's explained um, by each one is very small. Now, um, let's add one more independent variable to the mix. All right, now let's suppose that there is a third independent variable. And this third independent variable Wink goes like that. And this is 
genes, your genetic predisposition to becoming depressed. And say that the genetic predisposition is a really big predictor. Say it explains a lot, like 60% of the variance in depression. Something like that. So this has two effects. Now that you've added this variable to the model, one thing that it does is it doesn't really leave very much variance in um, depression left, right? There's not very much to explain. The other is that it overlaps a little bit with the alcohol and the relationship woes. So it takes even more of their explanatory power away. All right, so to review uh, multiple regression, the whole idea is that you have um, the ability to see how much of the variance in some dependent variable can be explained by a collection of two or more independent variables. And what we really want to know is what's the unique relationship between each independent variable and the dependent variable when the other independent variables are controlled. In this example, when we control the genetic um, contribution to depression, when we take out the percentage of variance that is explained by genes, then the amount of variance in depression that's explained by other factors like relationship woes and alcohol ends up being very small. And partly that's because genes explain so much of the variance in depression, and partly it's because uh, relationship woes alcohol consumption and genetics are all correlated with each other. So it doesn't leave very much unique variance for each of the independent variables to explain in depression. Hope that helps.